Welcome to Sea Otter 2022. This is day one. Come and join me and Doddy as we flow around the tents and find everything that's new, new in the tech world. Yeah, we've got videos going up today, tomorrow, the day after. Funky <laughs> mountain bike stuff, crazy people, and uh, really some great people. hosts here. Yeah, good times at Sea Otter. Woo! <laughs>Now, Continental Tires have been around for a very long time in mountain biking. We even used to run their tires on GMBN. But what they've just announced here is a range of brand new tires, and this very much is a line in the sand. These are nothing like anything they've done before. And I've got to say, Continental is a new major player on the tire scene. So come inside and we'll have a look at these. We've got five designs of tire here. One of them is a pair of tires. And for mixed conditions, dry conditions, wet conditions, hard pack conditions, you've got three different rubber compounds available and three different styles of casing across those patterns. Let's have a closer look. You've got to check these out. As I just said, there's five different designs of tyre. So essentially there's four tyres, but one of them is a front and rear specific. So the Cryptotail is a front and rear specific design. Right in front of me here, we have the Zynotail. So this is very much a hard pack condition tyre. Uh, it would work really well, I reckon, for front or rear. As I explained, there's different casing options and different compounds, but this very much will be the fastest rolling of the tyres. I'd say for like hard pack and mixed conditions, this is a really cool looking tyre. But let's go and have a look at the Cryptotail next. Now this tire has a front and rear specific design. The stack height on the knobs is much more aggressive. The rear tire is slightly open compared to the front tire. The front's got a bit more contact there. It reminds me a little bit, I guess, of an Azagai, so definitely not a bad thing. There's a lot of rubber, directional knobs on there, shapes and sipes, and loads of buttress support on those side knobs there. So that's a seriously aggressive tire. So that's pretty much, I'd say, the bread and butter of the range. Now, as you can see on their graphics here, a total departure from what they did before. So all the packaging previously, they had plastic packaging around the tires. Now it's recycled cardboard. And you've got these cool little icons explaining to you what sort of ride in the tyres orientated for, which sort of conditions it is, the casing it's available in, and the compound. So that is across the range. You've got all of those options and all these tyres. And next up is the Argotel. As you can see, this is seriously open and aggressive. Now, in my eyes, this is basically a UK tyre all year round. You could use this in the mud, you could use this in the loam. Again, the same thing, a high stack height in the knobs. You've got the forward-facing ramp, you've got the sipes, you've got the buttress shaping for the support and the compound. Oh my god, that's seriously soft. I don't know what the compound is on these, but it does remind me of some of those early Maxxis tyres. Remember Slow Rize? Something like that. So they were like 40A. Uh, I haven't got my compound like Shore meter here to give these a little, t a little try, but man, these things are seriously soft. Probably the most exciting for a Brit like me, the Hydrotel. So this, as you probably guessed it, is for mud. For mud and the wet. And look how aggressive it is. Look at the height of the knobs on here. Now, something that's really different about this is in the past, mud tyres exclusively almost had a really hard compound to, so the idea was to claw into the mud, which meant as soon as you got near wet rock or roots, they were terrifying, it just didn't work. But these have got all the support, but it's really soft rubber. So they're not just going to fold over, but they are definitely going to give you the purchase that you need. I don't think I've ever seen a mud tyre this aggressive. Like, this is absolutely bonkers. Yeah, that's right. There we go. So you've got four, well, it's actually five tyres from Continental, a brand new range, three casing options, three different rubber compound options. Uh, I'm, I'm really impressed. I think Continental have actually done a really good range of tyres. Uh, seriously impressive stuff from the brand. What do you reckon? Are they back in the game? Let us know in those comments underneath. So I'm here at the Fox tent here with Nick and he's going to talk us through the brand new Fox 36 just dropped today. It looks kind of familiar but a little different. Tell us what's changed. Yeah, well we have a new crown steerer unit here with a, a slightly taller crown for more overlap with the tube. It does increase axle to crown height by about four millimeters but it gives you a much more positive overlap and a much more durable fork overall. Uh, this fork has the air bleeders in the back for atmospheric pressure changes when you're, you know, riding at different places at different altitudes. And it utilizes our floating axle system that really makes sure the tubes are always parallel regardless of any variances in any hub dimensions. Cool, and there's mention of a new air oil channel. Can you explain that to me? Uh, yes, absolutely. On the back here, you might be able to see these uh, channels here that allow uh, air that's trapped in the lowers to get past the bushing and to the air bleeder. 
and it also allows oil to splash up there and lubricate that upper bushing a little more effectively. And we've also got your new gravel specific fork here. What can you tell us about this? Well, this is our 32TC, that's for taper cast. Uh, we wanted to keep the clean lines of a traditional road style fork so it wouldn't look out of place, um, but we offer 40 millimeters of travel. Uh, it comes with a cobalt axle and uh, the standard fit four damper that everybody knows and loves. It's 40 and 50 mil travel options, is that right? Options available, yes, and uh, the whole package comes in at about 1,200 grams, so it's a really competitive weight in this category. And uh, next to it, we have our 27.2 Transfer SL, which is just the perfect pairing for this setup when you're on a gravel bike with you know, maybe a little higher top tube than you're used to on your mountain bike. That's going to get you home. Cool, and Fox say this is the lightest fork you've ever made? Ever, ever? Ever, ever. Ever, ever? Ever, ever. Yeah, I mean, I've been around for 15 <laughs> seasons with Fox, and we've never seen anything this light. Cool, and there's mention that the uh, travel is adjustable. Is that something that all of them are able to do, and how do you do that? Yeah, just about any of our float-based products are adjustable. It's not, you know, a spacer removal or something. It would be a, a, a replacement of the air shaft for a different length, but it's, it's quite easy to do. It doesn't take, you know, very many special tools. This fork does require a little bit more tooling than some of the other forks. Um, the top caps are uh, utilizing a cassette lock ring tool now to keep them lower profile for better down tube clearance. And if you look at the back side here, which is almost impossible to do, you're going to see that uh, the lower leg nuts here are recessed within the casting. So there is a little bit of a small tool that we use to access those, but nothing prohibitive. And it's very easy to work on just like any of the other Fox products. It's a Palmer Edition Specialized FSR. Coolest bike here. I mean, everything about it. Stars and Stripes paint job on there. The early SRAM mech. Check that. So that's like proper old school SRAM radio on there. Mavic D521 wheels on there. The Transalp tyres. So they actually might bash up as wild gripper downhills, but I think there were Transalps before that. Uh, Fox coil overshot. The MRP Ultra Speed chain guide on there. Now that was the coolest chain guide you could get. And I, I don't know what size ring on that. It's probably like 48 or something massive on there. We don't see XCR cranks, Manitou Expert ties on the front, HFX mag brakes, pro taper bars. Man, look at this thing. So pretty legendary bike from way back, running a four bar pivot system. Surprisingly similar to the Intense that you rode previously. So I'm here in the Intense tent and we're looking at the brand new Tracer 279 which just dropped this week. Looking really good. You've got a slacker head angle, a steeper seat post angle. You've also got some more frame protection on the chainstay, keeping it nice and quiet. You've got protection on the down tube for shuttling. Not to mention right underneath the bottom bracket we've got the Chad storage system as well. And for all you you gnarly enduro racers out there we've got the s build which is slightly more aggressive you've got olin's front and rear rental bars burlier forks with two or three rotors on there and it's looking really nice when is an orange not quite an orange? Well, when you put a linkage in it, that's how. So using a classic single pivot here, the new Switch 7 is a slightly refined bike. Well, in fact, slightly refined, totally refined bike, using a linkage they call the power link here to add way more support and a more progressive action to really suit what the Enduro race is needed. In terms of geometry on here, it's talking 63 degrees up front, 76 on the seat angle there. Reach between 458 millimeters all the way up to 502 on the XL. As you can see, running a mullet style setup there on the wheels. So that's a bigger wheel on the front and a smaller wheel on the rear. Look at that linkage on there. I'm just going to get down a bit low on this. And even the profiling of the tubes is, I think, dramatically changed from what I've seen on previous previous bikes. I, I think this is a really good departure from the classic and the iconic design of Orange to incorporate something that the racers really needed, but it still has that identity that we famously know as Orange. So we're just walking past the DVO suspension tent and Jeff Lenoski's new prototype steel Reeb is here, the Reeb SST, which is short travel, <laughs> which is like 120 to 130 on the rear here and a 150 diamond on the front. And uh, what's really interesting, we've got 3D printed parts here in the rear triangle and a flex stay in the rear chain stay, which I've not seen before. Um, let's talk to Jeff and see how he feels about his prototype. 
Jeff, tell me, how's it going for you? It's going great. So it's pretty exciting. This is a new bike for us. It's a steel short travel bike. That's why it's called the SST. And we're just trying to keep things as simple as possible. So that's why we decided to go with the flex day and just get rid of some of the moving parts in the back. And then a lot of the pivot points are 3D printed, so it allows us to make them hollow. So you can have a steel bike without it weighing a ton. But the nice thing about the steel frame is you know that it could handle anything. So I, I'm testing out the JDEX coil on there. It's, it's giving me 130 millimeters rear travel and the cool thing is it's a little oversprung right now so I'm not getting a lot of sag when I sit on it but it still has a ton of small bump compliance it makes it really playful on a trail and the cool thing about that shock is it has a proper lockout so when you want to lock it out it literally makes it like a hardtail. So I'm here at MRP10 and I'm here with Noah. Noah, what have you got new for us here today? Yeah, so last year we introduced our Shred Coat program. So that's a custom color program for our suspension forks. Uh, we launched that with 15 colors and we're introducing three new colors here. So 18 total colors now. Nice suit. For us, yeah. So we've got this Dark Earth, what we've got going on here, and this is your own bike, isn't it? my personal bike, yeah. So Dark Earth is this beautiful brown color. Um, we've got it on the fork there, and then we also have it on the rear shock spring. So that's a new program for us. We're extending it to the rear shocks now, so you can get 18 different colors of springs with us. And you can custom the lowers and the stunt, uh, yeah, the uppers as well. The, the crown and the lowers, or just the crown, or just the lowers, and yeah. Cool, so the added new colors, we've got the dark earth here. We've also got a titanium, and that periwinkle is absolutely beautiful, like a kingfisher blue. Yep. Absolutely love that, nice. So the MRP-10 also has the MRP Baxters, which is the gravel-specific fork. It comes in a 40 mil and a 60 mil. So 60 mil is like a lot uh, bigger than some of the other Fox and Rock shots in terms of travel for more adventure-style gravel, I would say. And you've got this adjustable offset down here. You also have bottle bosses, which means you can carry three pounds either side. And obviously it comes in the 18 different customers colors and that sounds really shallow but I love this because it makes it look like a gravel bike it's like a gravel fork it doesn't look like a separate mountain bike fork shoved onto a gravel frame so yeah hats off MIP I'm loving this so we're here in the POC trailer and obviously their hero product is the new Otacon helmet which is their ventilated full face helmet aimed at all mountain and enduro and obviously we launched this and you've seen my purple one on the tech show a couple of weeks ago but it's great to see all of the other new um, colorways here so obviously the two-tone is the race and the single color is the non-race so all of the Otacons come fully ventilated obviously and they come with the Reco as well but the race edition comes with MIPS it has a slightly more reinforced shell and it also comes with the NFC medical ID tag on there as well and something I've just learned today is that GoPro have made a specific mount that pops on into the mount guard here which is great. So I'm here at the Kush Core tent with Dan and I've spotted some newness and this looks like something I might need in my life so tell me what you got here. Yeah we just launched this tool today it's called the Bead Bro and um, it's for this exact situation here is when you get the tire on and you got just the last little bit of bead to get on and every time you go to lever one side on the other side pops out. Well, that's where the bead bro comes in. Just simply clip it into the tire bead and on a spoke here. It'll hold that bead on. It'll free both your hands. Like we say, it's like having a third hand. So we're at the Scott tent here and I really can walk past this beautiful Scott Spark RC SL. So it's the RC, the race concept, brand new for this year, redesigned around 120 in the front and the rear. It's been tested by Nino Scherter. This is direct feedback from him wanting the longer travel and they've completely re-engineered the whole model so that it's just as light and just as stiff. And you've got these beautiful Syncross wheels, the Silverton SL 
else, which is a single carbon mold. And I mean fully carbon. Those spokes are in the mold too. You've got the hub is carbon and that's been bonded on afterwards. And these are 1250 grams. And although they're super light, they've designed these to be super stiff so that powerhouses like Nino can just accelerate like nobody's business. And obviously, as with all sparks, we've got the rear shock integrated into the frame to keep it out of the elements. But you've got this little compartment door here, which is easy to open so that you can access all your dials if you need to. So I'm here at the Wolf Tooth Components tent and they're one of those brands that do so much more than you expect them to do. They do tools, multi-tools, they do proper tools, they also do little bags for your bikes and it's always super high grade aluminium CNC machined parts that are just beautiful and they come in usually eight different colours if you're into colour coding your bike and what's caught my eye is they had the 8-bit pack plier out last October which is like a 17 function multi-tool beautiful bit of kit um, but they brought out a miniature version of the multi-tool so that you can have it on your keyring and have all of those little hex parts inside the pliers um, and they've also brought out this neat little onboard tool system which basically fits onto your threaded wolf tooth axle or if you have a thread on your axle already this thing just pops right on and you've got a 5mm allen key which steps down to a 6mm which is super cool and then it comes with four parts um, much like the multi-tool but you can choose two of those parts to go into your lever so it's always there always on your bike and it comes in the eight colors as they usually do and I just think this is a super nice bit of kit love this okay well that was the end of day one I saw some seriously cool stuff uh, what was the best thing you reckon you saw today Anna? Gravel suspension forks, especially that MRP Baxter fork with the luggage carriers on the front. Oh, really? Yeah. I really did it for you, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. Nice. And you? Uh, I've got to say, I find it strange saying this, but the new Continental range of tyres, I think that Dante? they have got a really, really good, legit range of tyres now. Really good tread design, really good rubber, really good casing options. Um, really cool stuff. I'm like, I'm surprised. That's a line in the sand for those guys, I'm sure. Uh, let cool. us know in the comments underneath what your favourite thing of today was. And it's not the end. Join us tomorrow for more Sea Otter Classic tech. And also, if I just don't, I'm uh, moonlighting over on EMBN. So <laughs> if you like your E stuff, get over there as well and uh, see what's going on. We'll see you in the next video. See you later.